Welcome to AP Podcast 6.1B. This is a continuation of uh, uh, our start on thermodynamics. And you can see right here, this starts with the first law of thermodynamics, and that is basically that the energy of the universe is constant. In other words, if you remember our definition from before, it was energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. And so that is just simply the law of conservation of energy. So there's a few things we need to look at so we can start using these concepts to do a little bit of equations. And first of all, from last year and, and specific heat, you remember that Q equals heat. Um, and then W, we've just spent a little time uh, defining it a few slides ago, but W equals work. And so if you want to know the change in energy of a system, it's simply a, a combination of the heat involved plus the work that the system does. So any change in energy equals the, the heat plus the work. And then when we're going to be doing this, because remember last time we talked about uh, the system and the surroundings, and we talked about the, you know, the sign of uh, the value of energy, whether it was positive or negative. We want to take the system's point of view. So we're always talking about from the system's point of view. And for, for us in chemistry, that really means uh, probably the beaker or the flask or whatever we happen to be doing our work on. So let's, uh, I told you before we would look at work a little uh, more in detail. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, what exactly is work? Well, work is simply a force acting over a distance, all right? If you were to think about a block, all right, you have a block, and you were to move it, let's say 10 meters, okay, it would take some force. You would have to be pushing from this side, all right? You would be acting a force on this uh, block and moving it over a distance. That would be considered work. What's not considered work, let's say Mr. Stick Figure here is pushing against the wall and he's pushing as hard as he can, hard he can, hard he can, and he's sweating bullets and working hard, it seems like. But from our definition, since the wall, the wall right here, did not move, he did not do any work. And so this really, again, is kind of an overlap of physics and chemistry, and it's more physics, but we have to talk about work uh, so we can kind of understand how we're going to figure out uh, the change in energy uh, of a system. So anyways, we've got work equals this force times the distance. And then we also know that pressure, and this directly pertains to our chemistry, pressure is a force over distance. Imagine, pardon me, a force divided by an area. You've got this area, and you've got all these molecules bouncing around, all right? And so that area, um, when you take the force and divide it by the area, you get a pressure. Now, if I were to use the magic of algebra and I were to rearrange this equation a little bit, uh, let me erase this spot here. If I were to rearrange this a little bit and I was, was to move force over to this side, right, where force is there, I would get force equals um, the pressure times uh, an area, right? Uh, that's what I would get. Force equals a pressure times area. If I were to stick pressure times area into this spot right here, I would get force equals, um, I would, pardon me, I would get work equals the pressure times the area times some kind of distance, right? And in chemistry, we talk a lot about cylinders in this chapter, so it's likely going to be a height. But anyways, if I took an area times a distance, what does that equal? Area times a distance, this little geometry stuff, that equals a volume, right? So it turns out that work involved equals the pressure times the volume. And so we can do that. So as you can see in this bullet right here, work can be calculated by multiplying the pressure by the change in volume at a constant pressure. Whoa, yeah. All right. Now, we're going to get a unit here, which is liters atmosphere. So if you can imagine, pressure is in ATMs and volume is in liters. Now, why it's called liter atmosphere is not atmosphere liters, I don't know. But most of the textbooks call it a liter atmosphere. So let's think about the sign of the work. Again, with, uh, with Q, uh, heat energy, we talked about positive and negative signs for exothermic and endothermic. We've got to do exactly the same thing for work. Right? So... You've got to imagine, uh, I'll draw the cylinder because, again, the cylinder is what they always use. 
imagine a cylinder, right? And there's a piston in this cylinder. And if we can move this, the, the cylinder up, we would be expanding the volume, right? If the cylinder went down, we would be contracting the volume. Well, if you can imagine work done by a system, and again, right here, this area right in here, that's our system, okay? If work on the system is done on the surroundings, uh, work is negative. And you can think of it as work leaving the system, just like we thought of energy leaving the system. If work is done on the surroundings, in this case right here, you can think of work being put into the system and work is positive. Okay, very, very important concept. Sometimes students get it backwards and mixed up a little bit. We're going to try and keep track of it. Now, another way to think of this, uh, if, if the work and system stuff is bothering you, think of it this way. If the volume of the gas increases, uh, the system has done work on the surroundings, all right? So work is negative. Conversely, if work is contracting, the surroundings do the work and work is positive. So there you go. Now, that gives us this nice little formula right here. Work of the system equals a negative P times the change in volume. Now I want to talk about this negative sign for a second because it needs to make sense in your brain. All right. Think about what's going to happen if this thing expands, right? If this thing expands, work should be negative, right? If this thing contracts, work should be positive. Well, if this expands, what's going to happen to my volume? All right the volume is going to increase. So the change in volume is going to be a positive number, right? Let's say it goes from one liter to five liters, all right? The change is a positive four liters, right? So I would put a value like four right there, and then the pressure is whatever they give us. Let's say it's one atmosphere. That gives me a negative sign, which is what I want because the pressure uh, the volume increased and work therefore should be negative. Now let's think about the other way. Let's imagine that uh, the pressure went down. What would be the change in my volume? Well, the volume went from 5 to 1, and that's since 1 minus 5 is a negative 4, okay? That gives me a negative 4 I'd put right here times the pressure, and a negative times a negative gives me a positive number. And so therefore, work is positive. So this negative here keeps our sign straight for work. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, all right? And then here's another conversion. This conversion, by the way, I'm pretty sure is on your AP worksheet. We'll use this a little bit if we want to convert this work unit of liter atmospheres to a joule unit, which, you know, when we're talking about energy, it's a lot better to do things uh, in joules. So let's do a couple problems. You'll see these aren't too bad. Uh, calculate the change in energy for a system undergoing an endothermic process which 15.6 kilojoules of heat flows and where 1.4 kilojoules of work is done. Well, I'm going to write out that equation that I've got. And that happens to be the, the change in energy, right? Equals the heat energy plus the work. Well, what's my heat energy? It's endothermic. Okay, so what's the sign for 15.6 kilojoules? Hopefully you're going to say it's positive, right? So it's a positive sign. Okay, plus uh, 1.4 kilojoules of work is done on the system, okay? In other words, here's my system. Work is done on it. Oops, not a very good straight line. Okay, so what does that make the sign for W? It also makes it positive. So it's basically 15.6 plus 1.4 kilojoules, and that gives me a value of 17 kilojoules of energy. Not too bad, right? Okay, so there you have it. Let's look at another problem. What amount of work is done when 14.6 liters of gas is expanded at 15 atmospheres of pressure? Okay, so we're trying to find work. Work equals negative pressure. Oops times a change in volume. Well, the pressure is 15 ATMs. And the change in volume. Now, is the gas increasing or decreasing in volume? Look what it says. It's expanding. So my question to you is, is the volume sign going to be positive or negative? Hopefully you're going to say it's positive because we our final pressure is 64 liters 
minus or my, my far, our final volume 46 liters okay and so when I work that out I get a value of a negative 270 uh, liter atmospheres okay now what would that be in kilojoules well let's just do a little conversion just for the heck of it I know that one liter atmosphere is 101.3 joules and I know that 1000 joules is one kilojoule so when you work that out you get a value of 27.4 kilojoules alright and so there you have it um, boy, I just again I'm having issues with these pens so not too bad to do these problems, but the concept of work and pressure and volume and energy and heat, all that, you've got to kind of keep straight in your brain, especially with the signs, because that's one of the things that typically causes students some issues. So, like always, if you have questions, we'll talk about it in class. See you later.